Plastics, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you choose the name? How did you like get involved with music? I mean, the name came like two years ago, but I didn't even come up with it, so it's not that cool of a story. But um, I've been producing for like seven years. I always wanted to make music, but I just sucked at it. And then I started like making electronic music. Kind of came naturally. Was in bands, played drums, guitar, stuff like that. So kind of all led up to. And plus, it was like heavy rock and stuff, like metal, that type of shit. So it makes sense with the heavy stuff that I make. Okay. Yeah. So I heard that <coughs> awesome story about your grandma. Oh yeah. You came up with that name, so. Uh, I'm just feeling a little tired today, but normally I would have made some right. extravagant story. Just don't tell anybody that that's not real. Is this a part of the uh, Nitty Gritty brand? Yeah, I just, since the story is so dumb, I just make something up every time. <laughs> As an artist that mixes pretty much every subgenre of EDM possible in a set, what are the challenges of creating such a diverse set? Uh, it's actually it's, it's mainly just when you're putting songs in key, which is like sonically they're gonna match. So like mm -hmm. when you're matching a bunch of different genres, the vibe can really be thrown off unless you transition it the right way. So it's like it takes a little bit to like go from you know hard dubstep to trap to house to maybe move the tone to future bass. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It really has to do to me with like those sections and little vibes of getting people to feel that kind of music for a little bit instead of just chopping in and out of every single one it's nice to do like a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of that so you kind of can get used to it and it's not too surprising gotcha yeah that's um, how i look at it so how how do you think you grew up like since the your project the your Kingers project i mean it's it's more just like the branding grew and like having fun with social media and like actually, mm -hmm. it's not a job to me. Like I, I love talking to fans and I love posting media that me and Jeremy do. And it's like, we do a bunch of dumb shit. And it's really fun and it's not serious. So it's like, from Ricky Mears, it's a little more serious. I made like more melodic stuff, but it's kind of fun to be like more of like a party DJ and just do fun things and just enjoy it. It's not, nothing crazy serious, you know what I mean? Like I'm literally making dub stuff with Shaquille O'Neal. You can't take that seriously. Like, <laughs> It, it's, it's just fun. There's no other word to describe it, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, is there a specific track that you love to drop for your set? Like, the most? I mean, I love dropping, like, a good Britney Spears track or something. Mm -hmm. Those are my guilty pleasures. They're like the Kesha, ed the Kesha edit I have. Oh, yeah. I love playing that. <laughs> like, it's obviously, I love playing, like, Crack and, like, What the Fuck and stuff, but those little, like, whoa, whoa like, how'd you do Those are the best. Yeah, those are the funny <laughs> ones. Um, how did it feel when Lights became one of the top played tracks at Edinburgh? It's just a lucky blessing. <laughs> it's dope. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you think it would happen? Yeah, it was kind of random. I definitely knew it was good, but it's just, you. it's like they always say you never know what songs are going to hit. Mm -hmm. And that one, like, I just, like, I knew it was good, but, no, like, none of us knew it would really do that. Um, but, yeah, it's just... Happy that it's doing what it is. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, is there a subgenre or style uh, that has been more challenging to write than you had thought? Um, pop music, because I love making, I want to make hits, and I, I tried to work on like some Enrique records, Pitbull records, and then we did one for Bad Bunny. Um, and then we're like always trying to make some, any of the bigger artists. And those to me normally, surprisingly are harder even if it is a pop kind of sound because it's like thinking about what could be a hit is really hard mm -hmm. versus just doing something from my gut like making a dubstep track or making a trap set or like you know a trap it's like I just sit down and make it that's it okay uh what are some things that's a music that have inspired you to do um I love like sports and, and exercising and like snowboarding and going wow. to the beach, yeah, I, all that. I love it. even today we were out like riding everywhere we go. If there's birds, we're like riding scooters and shit. Like, uh, good food, that shit is inspiring. Oh my gosh, not really, but it is. Uh, Do you have a chance to try any Atlanta food? Well, I don't know if it's really Atlanta food, but last time I was here, I got bar taco just because I loved it so mm -hmm. much, and we went back today. Nice. Um, but I've definitely been here at other times and had like good home cooked like southern, southern <laughs> yeah you know always okay 
Uh, what advice do you have for young up and coming artists that may encounter technical difficulties such as uh, the ones you recently experienced in Tulsa? Oh, that's the least of your worries. Messing up at a set is the easiest if you admit it. Like, yo, I messed up. Everyone's like, it's all, it's all good. Like, mm -hmm. it's just acting like too cool to like, oh, or I hate when people, this is the number one thing to do. <laughs> I'm looking at all the producers. Don't be a little diva and blame the tech or blame the like even if it is their fault you don't have to be a little bitch about it just suck it up make shit work and you're fine unless it really is an insane problem like i've seen some people like get mad i'm like bro like it takes five seconds usually to fix something like cash cash at ultra yeah i was about to mention that <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that i know them i know those guys they joke that around awesome. i think that was like a fun like you know, they might have just done that to do it for fun, like, but that is an example, like, especially for an up-and-coming DJ, nobody actually cares about you yet. Don't make your, don't, don't make it difficult to be liked. You want to be liked. That's the number one thing. You want, like, I try to say hi and be, you know, nice to anybody in hospitality, anybody in the club, because if you're not, like, no one's going to like you. And then that's, like, half the battle is getting people locally to support you, so... And probably like yeah. cheap USBs. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> technically, there. yeah, there's no real guarantee. Just bring more than one. Like, I had to, one already broke, honestly, it's crazy. <laughs> okay. uh, what's the country on your bucket list that you want to play? Um, I want to play in like France, Italy, and Germany. Hmm. I'm going to Austria and then Belgium for Tomorrowland, but. Um, have you thought about Russia? Yeah, I would love to go to Russia, actually. They have a big city. I'm from Russia, you are? So yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it's probably more like house and... It's very, yeah, it's very housey, but like, Russia is good really hard with dubstep. Yeah, they love them. I actually know a bunch, of, a bunch of producers that are Russian, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Artie, the two cents at Co. Yeah, um, but like little dubstep ones that send me music and they're really, oh, yeah. they're really cool okay. kids. I just... Yeah, I can't remember, nice. but mm -hmm. who? Flax. Yeah, I do have chargers. Yeah, there's some crazy Russian kids out there. They're really good. Okay, yeah, so I've got a question. So, how did you come up with your alter ego, Rebecca? <laughs> Listen, bitch, you don't have to know about me, okay? I am who I am. I don't know. I that is so amazing. It goes back to me playing like Britney Spears and Kesha. I don't know. Oh. That EDC trailer was the best, <laughs> the best thing ever. It wasn't even as Jeremy. It was so much worse. Like, I had a oh bunch of God. hilarious shit, but we had to take it out because you can't do oh drug no. references. Oh, no. But I understand. A festival doesn't, you know, they you know, they don't want anything yeah. to do with that. It was really bad, bro. The unedited one is, <laughs> is like, American Pie unrated version. Like, it's, it's really good, but... Well, maybe I'll just show you that one. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, speaking of Rebecca, you had a collab with another meme lord, Eliminate, so... Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> how, how was it to work with him? Uh, honestly, we made the track online, and he's just so dope. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I know him really well, though, so... Mm -hmm. We always hang out in L.A., and then we're both working with Shaq, so we both have songs with him. We, we I was recording um, Shaq uh, doing drops for me and mm -hmm. Nate. Uh, no, he's just from stupid town. He's the best trap guy. He's the best. <laughs> All right, I've got one more question for you. So I'm gonna show you a video, and I'm gonna ask. Reaction you. video. Yes. So this is a video. I love this guy. I already know. All right. Already know All right. That's good. That's good. I mean, it's not just get, but you just get All right. There you go. You just drop in and just smack the lip. Pull back. Drop down. Snap. Ah! So I'm gonna ask you to describe your favorite <coughs> drop the way he does. Oh man, I'm trying to think of a drop. Give me a drop. Give me, give me a good drop. Oh, no. Crack VIP. <laughs> oh, crack VIP. It's like, ah, and then it doesn't come. And then at the end, there's a double build, and the build's like, ah, and then it slows the fuck down. And you're just like, ah, and it just explodes. All over you. That was very. That, yeah, sexual. that was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was it. Thank you.